All right, today we're kicking off a new series. This will be part one of my first dedicated to ammunition review. We'll be focused on AAC 77 grain OTM. In this video, I'll be shooting 30 shot groups with six different barrels, and then analyzing group sizes and velocity data to get a realistic sense of what to expect from this ammo. Part two of this review, which will be coming a few weeks later, will cover lot to lot variations since there's been growing concern about inconsistent performance between different batches. So the AAC 77 grain OTM seems to be a fairly popular choice. For a 77 grain load, it's remarkably inexpensive. Typically, for something in this price range, I would generally expect a 55 grain projectile, but AAC managed to come in at a very competitive price for a 77 grain load. However, in the last several months, this load has come under a little bit of scrutiny due to user reports of questionable quality and reduced velocity when compared to earlier lots of this same ammunition. Anyway, we'll go over the basic specs real quick. The 77 grain projectile is manufactured by Hornady, and it sits on top of a reloadable boxer primed brass case with an AAC head stamp without a crimp on the primer. And this load is rated at 2,700 feet per second out of a 20 inch barrel and has an advertised G1 ballistic coefficient of 0.362. Today's video sponsor is Jack Wolf Knives. Jack Wolf Knives is based right here in Phoenix, Arizona. They offer a variety of high quality everyday carry pocket knives. They're best known for taking timeless knife designs and producing them with modern materials and methods. Whether out in the field or at a nice dinner, Jack Wolf has an option for you. So if you're looking for an heirloom quality knife to add to your collection, check out Jack Wolf Knives on the web or Instagram. Available for purchase at their authorized dealers worldwide. And don't forget to visit his booth at the 2025 Blade Show in Atlanta, Georgia, June 6th through 8th. All the ammo used for this test is from the same lot, which is lot SCL3EB201. And this was purchased by me on March 4th of 2025. I'll be shooting the 77 grain AAC out of six different barrels today. This will include a Daniel Defense Cold Hammer Forge 16 inch lightweight, a Geisley Taper Profile Cold Hammer Forge 16 and a quarter inch, a Sons of Liberty Gunworks SPR 16 inch, a Haas Defense 14.5, a Noveski Rival V2 17 inch barrel, as well as an old school Nordic Components 18 inch 416R stainless barrel. Each barrel was cleaned before testing. All barrels were fitted into upper receivers with free float handguards. A 3 inch bag rider is used to fit the front rest, and a rear bag is also used. No muzzle devices will be used to prevent possible interference. The lower is set up with a Geisley Super Dynamic 3 gun trigger with an A5 buffer system that has an A5 dash zero buffer and Sprinco green spring. The scope is a Vortex Viper 6.5 to 20 by 44 with rings torqued to 15 inch pounds. Magnification was set to 20 and parallax was confirmed with a head nod test. Each barrel will shoot a 30 round group at 100 yards. This simulates a match or practical scenario where the barrel might get some heat into it. Velocity will be measured by two chronographs. Downrange, I have a Pro Chrono DLX. The data from the DLX will be corrected to reflect the velocity at the muzzle. And the second chronograph is a Garmin 0C1 Pro chronograph, which was provided by Ballistic X. A Mantis X10 Elite is mounted to the front of the handguard to keep track of rifle stability and detect any possible shooter-induced flyers. Point of aim was a small circle at the bottom of the target. Point of impact was set a few inches higher to preserve the aiming point. Groups will be measured by the Ballistic X app. Wind was monitored with a ribbon. Each 30 shot group took about four minutes to shoot and will be edited down to about 15 seconds. All right, let's do it. Okay, so five of these six barrels were shot on the same day. The Nordic Components barrel was shot a few weeks later. The temperature and conditions weren't drastically different, but we'll go over that in a little bit. Anyway, the shooting for the groups all felt fine on my end. Nothing felt significantly out of place with any of the shots. Wind was pretty calm for all the groups and the chronographs and mantis did a pretty good job picking up most of the data, only missing just a few shots here and there. So yeah, nothing really out of the ordinary with the shooting. The recoil fell on par with what I expected, and you can see the ejection pattern from the various barrels. Anyway, we will finish up here and then take a closer look. All right, before getting into the data, I'll mention that there were no malfunctions with this ammo, and I was also able to collect every piece of brass, and while I didn't look at each piece under a microscope, Nothing looked obviously out of place. The primers looked fine, and there were no significant pressure signs that I saw, or any split necks, pressure cases, or anything else like that. So, in short, out of the rounds that I fired, I didn't see anything that gave me a concern, although there have been several others with different experiences that they have posted online. Anyway, we will move on to the velocity summary. The 14.5 inch Hodge had a velocity of 2409. The 16 inch barrels have velocities in the range from 2420 to 2460. The 17 inch Noveski clocked in at 2497. And the 18 inch Nordic had an average velocity of 2553. Standard deviations range from 19 feet per second to 28 feet per second. And if we average all those, we end up with an average SDE of 21 feet per second and an average extreme spread of 96 feet per second. 
Next, we'll run through each barrel and look at a few different metrics. But before we do, I'll briefly go over my AZ score for the new folks. So AZ stands for A Zone Equivalence Distance, and it gives you the maximum distance where the calculated group size would still fit into a USPSA A Zone. The reason why I use a score is because it's easier for me to make sense of the group numbers than compared to looking at the raw mean radius numbers. Anyway, starting with the Daniel Defense, the Garmin Chrono missed three shots, but the DLX captured all 30 shots, and there weren't any significant disagreements between the two, so the velocity numbers look fine. Rifle Spility looked good with an average score of 99.6 and a low score of 99.3. Moving on to the group, it looks pretty well distributed with nothing obviously out of place, and we ended up with a group size of 3.2 MOA with a mean radius of 1.0 MOA. And if we break the 30 shot group down into three 10 shot groups, we end up with an average 10 shot group size of 2.6 MOA. And if we look at how the AAC compared to the other ammo shot out of the Daniel Defense Barrel, it tied with the Frontier 68 grain BTHPs with an AZ score of 138 yards. So, not too bad. And next up is the Geisley. Both chronos were in agreement with one another, and they both registered the velocity on shot 19 as being really low. Shot 19 came in 90 feet per second below the average velocity. The next slowest shot was 47 feet per second below the average velocity. So, that's a bit abnormal. Rifle stability data looked fine with an average score of 99.5 and a low score of 99.0. And now we have to address this really, really ugly looking group. So I've grouped this Geisley barrel before when I made the solo video about it. And while it didn't shoot fantastic, the groups were fine. So seeing a group this bad is really surprising. I thought the barrel nut might have been loose or something, but I checked that when I got home and everything was torqued properly. But I decided to give it another chance in case I messed something up or something. So I kept the barrel and swapped out everything else and completely rebuilt the upper and then shot another group with it. So, let's see how that goes. Well, it looks like the Geisley just really doesn't like this ammo. Anyway, looking at the velocity data from the reshoot, there was another particularly low shot at 87 feet per second below the average, and that was shot number 5. Rifle stability looked fine with an average score of 99.6 and a low score of 99.0, and both of these groups look pretty similar for what they are. Pretty much a shotgun looking group. The first group had a group size of 5.6 MOA and a mean radius of 1.8 MOA, and the reshoot had a group size of 5.3 MOA with a mean radius of 1.7 MOA. So this looks like pretty consistently poor performance. And if we look at the 10 shot group breakdown, the first group had an average 10 shot group size of 4.7 MOA, and the reshoot had a average 10 shot group size of 4.3 MOA. So this looks like pretty consistently poor performance. And if we look at how the AAC compared to other ammo shot out of the Geisley, we can see that it performed really bad compared to everything else that I shot out of the Geisley, with AZ scores of 84 yards and 77 yards. And you can compare that to the PMC Bronze at 147 yards, and the other more expensive loads reaching out over 250 yards. So yeah, this ammo and barrel do not really get along together. Anyway, let's move on to the next barrel. The velocity data for the Sons of Liberty Gunworks SPR barrel looked fine with nothing out of place, and there were no significant disagreements between the two chronos. Rifle stability looks fine with an average score of 99.6 and a low score of 99.1. The group looks a little weird with some outliers high left and a few low right. Nothing looks off on the data with those shots and they felt fun on my end, so not sure what happened there. Anyway, total group size for all 30 shots is 3.6 MOA with a mean radius of 0.658 MOA. And if we break the group down into three 10 shot groups, the average 10 shot group size is 2.5 MOA. Comparing the AAC to other groups that I shot out of the Sun's Barrel, it's quite a bit behind the two top groups with the Hornady ELDs and Burger 77s, but given the price difference between the AAC versus the Hornady and Burgers, I'd still say this is a pretty solid performance with an AZ score of 214 yards. And moving on to the Hodge, there were no significant disagreements between the Chronos, and we had another significantly slower shot with shot number 11 at 81 feet per second slower than average. Rifle stability looked okay with an average score of 99.6 and a low score of 98.9 which is lower than what I like to see, but I think we'll be okay. And the group looks pretty consistent, minus the three outliers. Data looks fine on those shots, and they felt fine when I broke them. So you can make up your own mind as to what happened there. Anyway, group size for all 30 shots is 3.107 MOA, with a mean radius of 0.736 MOA, and an average 10 shot group size of 2.2 MOA. And the Hodge didn't particularly like this ammo compared to the other groups that I've shot with this barrel, but the AZ score still wasn't too bad at 192 yards. Okay, on to the Noveski Rival V2. The velocity data looks fine and nothing looks out of place to me. Rifle stability looks fine as well with an average score at 99.6 and a low score at 
Shot 13 and 25 are out there a little bit, but the rest of the group looks pretty well distributed. Group size came in at 2.406 MOA with a mean radius of 0.626 MOA and an average 10 shot group size of 2.0 MOA. And this is probably the second biggest surprise of this review. The Noveski rival really didn't shoot that well when I did my review on it, but this is a pretty strong showing with the AAC 77s with an AZ score of 225 yards. So a pretty impressive group for the Noveski with this load, and these two seem to make a pretty good pair. Okay, last group is with the Nordic Components barrel. Uh, this barrel was shot on a different day than the other barrels, so that's just something to keep in mind. Anyway, the velocity looks okay, although shot 14 was a little bit slow at 64 feet per second slower than average, which is a bit much. Anyway, rifle stability looked fine with an average score of 99.6 and a low score of 99.0. There are a couple shots outside of the bulk of the group, but nothing completely out of whack. Group size is 2.683 MOA with a mean radius of 0.638 MOA and an average 10 shot group size of 2.0 MOA. And this is the only group that I have on record for this barrel so far, so we won't be able to look at comparison groups. Okay, next let's put all this info together. The Noveski ended up with the best group with the AAC 77 OTMs with an AZ score of 225 yards, and the Nordic and Sons of Liberty barrels weren't too far behind with AZ scores of 221 yards and 214 yards. The Hodge fell a little bit farther behind at 192 yards, and then things dropped off a little bit with the Daniel Defense with an AZ score of 138 yards. And then bringing up the rear is the Geisley, which basically gave up twice. To get an overall picture of the ammo, we will average out things, and to do so, we will remove one of the Geisley groups so that it doesn't drag down the average too much. And across all barrels, we ended up with an average AZ score of 179 yards and an average 10 shot group size of about 2.6 MOA. So you guys can let me know in the comments if that sounds about right, or if you guys have had a different experience with this ammo. So overall, there were a couple oddities with this review. The Geisley barrel absolutely hated this load, and the Noveski did a lot better than I expected. And I'd say that the rest of the barrels generally fell in line with my expectations. There were a few groups that had a shot or two that had a significantly lower velocity than the rest, so that was also a little bit odd. And a fair amount of the groups had a few outliers, so whatever you want to make of that. But for an inexpensive 77 grain load, let me know what you think. Also, I should mention that AAC has a new 77 grain load that is rated at 2,550 feet per second versus this load, which is rated at 2,700 feet per second. And possibly related to that is that there are several reports that the 2,700 feet per second load has had lower velocities compared to lots that were purchased about eight months ago or so. But we'll be looking at that during part two, which will be coming up in a few weeks. Anyway, let me know your thoughts about this type of ammo review. I'd be interested to get some feedback. Obviously, there are a couple things that we could improve upon. More barrel lengths would obviously be nice. Going from 10.5 all the way up to 20 or 24 inch would be pretty cool. Also, maybe adding a bolt action would be pretty interesting. A standardized upper receiver, BCG, and handguard for all the AR-15 barrels would also be pretty useful in order to standardize everything. Also, having a standardized testing temperature would be pretty nice, but that's not exactly practical. And maybe testing temperature stability in different temperature extremes might provide some useful data. And also potentially gathering a few more different barrels from uh, different barrel tiers. But if you have any other ideas about what you would like to see, drop it in the comments below, and hopefully I can make the next one a little bit better. Anyway, thanks for sticking around. I'll see you next time. Later.